Here we go. What's going on, Excel fanatics? Vertex is here. Welcome to another episode of Fun with Excel. This video is going to feature solving the Jindash riddle. Um, if you're not a gamer, you probably won't get what this is, uh, but it's from the game called Dishonored 2. Um, so the idea of this riddle is that it's actually very similar to the idea of Einstein's riddle. So you have to identify from that riddle, for Einstein's riddle, you have to identify who lives in what house with various clues, and you figure it out by process of, of elimination. So this Jindash riddle is very similar, where it is ultimately we want to match the woman with her heirloom. And they give us various clues, like with color, the location that they're from, and the drink they were having. So I highlighted the name and the heirloom here as ultimately this is what we need to match up at the end of it. So really quick, if you need a reminder of where this is, it's in Mission 6, the Dust District. So if you actually go through and you solve this uh, yourself, you actually get an achievement and you don't need the play of the rest of the level. So, I mean, I don't know how much fun that actually sounds, but if this is a way you wanted to get that achievement, this would be one way to do it. So I'll just quickly show how you get to that spot because it's pretty early in the level. Uh, you quickly need to, you know, teleport up. Got to get to the windmill to turn off the power so you can go through the wall of light. And once you get through that, then you quickly talk to Megan and she gives you a quick update. And you are essentially right where you need to be. I think her name was Megan. Okay, so here it is right here. You see the two people talking. And essentially what we're looking for, we want to know the names at the top, where they were sitting. And, well, maybe not so much where they're sitting, but we need to be able to line up the who with the, with the heirloom. So on the right side is where you find the riddle. And when you open this up, it's a pretty much the same script, but actually I believe every game, the, the variables change. So what I have here, and I'm sorry if this is hard to read, but I'll, I'll put a, my description, I'll, I'll rewrite this in the description of, my, of the video. But my version is probably gonna be different than the version that you have if you are playing this game. So I copied the paragraph and pasted it right here in the spreadsheet just to make it an easy reference as I go through it instead of having to flip back and forth constantly. Um, so that will be my reference guide here. This table actually represents a bunch of different drop downs that I set up. So they all reflect data from this table on the right. And I've made another video on this, but essentially how you can do that yourself if you want to make your own drop downs, you go ahead and click on data. And there's an icon here called data validation. And notice how I made it allow. So this is a list. And then the source. So for this section, name going across represents this. And if I keep going down to each one where color will represent the column N, location O, and so on and so forth. So that will go across. The way that these two are set up, they're a bit transposed, uh, so that's why it seems a little differently, but that's how you would do that on your own if you'd like. Um, I think what I want to do, I'm going to be doing my work here in this section, but I want to, this is my ultimately what I want are the ladies here, and then the heirloom is going to go here. How do you spell it? heirloom? That's how. Okay, I might run through this once or twice, so bear with me. So here are all the ladies up top. The women sat in a row. They all wore different colors, and Dr. Marcola wore a jaunty blue hat. Nothing definitive just yet. Baroness Finch was at the far left. Okay. Next to the guest wearing a purple jacket. The lady in red sat to the left of someone in green. Okay, so that could be here. Red could be here or here. I remember that red outfit because the woman spilled their absinthe all over it. Okay, so red, whether it's here or here, red has a drink associated with it. 
let's keep reading. Uh, the traveler from Karnaka was dressed entirely in white. Okay, that's a location. Uh, when one of the dinner guests bragged about her snuff tin. I think there's a comma I, I missed here. The woman next to her said that they were finer in Karnaka where she lived. Okay, so that's a clue. We just need to clarify the colors. So, hold on. So, Countess Conti showed the prized ring. Um, so, actually, so since we have that, let's just put that there for now. At which the lady from Bailton scoffed, saying it was no match for her war medal. Someone else carried a valuable bird pendant, and when she saw it, the visitor from Dak Vada next to her almost spilt her neighbor's wine. Madame Nazio raised her rum in toast. The lady from Freyport, full of beer, jumped up onto the table, falling onto the guest in the center of the seat, spilling the poor woman's whiskey. Okay, the woman in the middle is whiskey. So, which means that this can't be red. Oops, sorry. This can't be red because red was abstinent, right? So, red. Going back up to the top. And the lady Winslow captivated them all with a story about her wild youth in Dunwall. Okay, so let's go back up again, right? So they all wore different colors. Dr. McCullough wore a jaunty blue hat. Okay, so we know that red is actually next to green. And the two colors left are white and blue. And we know that this isn't Dr. Marcola. So this has to be blue. Which means that this is white. Now, we did see the traveler from Karnaka was dressed entirely in white. Booyah. And when one of the dinner guests bragged about her snuff tin, the woman next to her said they were finer in Karnaka, where she lived. So the snuff tin goes here. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier. And so Countess Conte showed up a prize ring. We know I wrote that in just because I want that as a placeholder because this is ultimately what we want. Um, at which the lady from Belt and Scoff saying it was no match for her war medal. Okay, we don't know who yet. Someone else carried a bird pendant, and when she saw it, the visitor from Daka Davla next to her almost spilt her neighbor's wine. So we do have three spaces for drinks. So for drinks, we have wine, beer, and rum. So Madame Nazio raised her rum in toast. So Nazio could be in either one of these two spaces. The lady from Freyport, full of beer. Full of beer. Jumped up onto the table. So that could be one of these two spaces. So we have, who's, what's left in locations? Belton? Dabkavag? Dagaba? I can't pronounce that. I'm never even going to try. Um, that's this word down here. Sorry. Almost spilt her neighbor's wine. So that means that their wine isn't here. From Dagva, the visitor from Dagva next to her almost spilt her neighbor's wine. Belton has a war medal. So whoever's from Belton has the war medal. So it can't be Finch. That's not her. The war medal she can't have. Nor the snuff tin. Nor the ring. So Baroness Finch has diamond and bird pendant left, I guess. So is it diamond? Bird pend. So, Madame Nazio raised her rum in toast. Again, one of these two. So, if these two for Finch, this might be a big clue here, right? These are the only two that she could possibly have. Diamond isn't even mentioned on here. Bird pendant. So if the heirloom here is bird pendant, is this deck of here? Is that here? Is 
there was no match for a war medal. So here's where it might be guessing a little bit. So Dakava spilt her neighbor's wine. So the wine would be here. Right? So bird pendant here. So what's left? Rum? Rum, no, whiskey's already done. Rum and beer. So if the only other one, Freyport full of beer. So beer can't, isn't gonna be here, right? Okay, so this is beer, because they're, they're associated together. So this is the only ones that are open. Freyport full of beer. So there's two more locations here. We, Linzo Captain went with a story about our youth in Dunwall. So the two locations left are Dunwall. What's the other one? Dunwall and Belton? Okay, so well we know that Winslow is Dunwall. And Well, the last location was Belton. Belton had a war medal. So that was Marcola, all right, war medal. And there are two who's who right now. So does that mean because Conti is still here with the ring, right? So that's what that would mean. Then the last one here would be the diamond, because that's all that's left. And then who is the... So rum is the only drink left, too. So who was rum? Rum was Nazio. Okay. Um, let's see if that makes sense. Okay, so here's what I finally round up. If you could barely were following along with me. This was a lot of process of elimination. Um, we ended up with Winslow with the diamond, Marcola with the war medal, Conti with the ring, Nazio with the snuff tin, and then Finch with the bird pendant. Let's check to see if that worked out. All right, let's exit out of this. Take it over to the board. And we'll start with Finch. We know that was the bird pendant. And next one, we'll leave Marcola in place and change that to more metal. Just the actual order doesn't have to match the row, just have to line up the individuals. Next one is Winslow, and that was the diamond. Next, we're going to have here is Conti and the ring. That was the given. And finally, Nazio and the snuff tin. So if you did it like this, then you should see yourself getting an achievement, and you are well on your way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun.